Are you excited to be here? I need to hear some, a little bit of excitement. Are you excited to be here? All right, awesome. Hey, if you don't know me, my name is Adam Schooley. I am the young adult resident pastor here at Victory, and I am so honored to get to be with you guys tonight. It is truly my honor. Um, I want to take a second to thank our student ministry pastors, Pastor Ben and Alyssa Archer. Can we just celebrate them real quick? They are amazing, amazing leaders. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being the amazing and awesome leaders that you are. Echo, I am so excited. I have something on my heart for you. But before we get started, can we just honor our first and second time guests? If it is your first or second time in here, can you just raise your hand? I want to welcome you, make you feel excited. No? Okay. Well, hey, we want to say that welcome anyways. If it's your second, third time, welcome back. We're so excited that you are here with us today. Guys, our Cranberry Campus can we say hi to our Newcastle campus that is watching us through the video lens right there? Can we just welcome our Newcastle campus? Come on, we want to tell them that they are loved and welcomed to the, even though they are watching through a video, they belong and they are welcome here. They are family. We love them. Amen? Amen. So Newcastle. Keep on coming back. I want to encourage you to get plugged in there. You guys have an amazing leader in Connor. We absolutely love him here. You guys are so honored. So whatever you got to do, beg your parents to keep on coming back and get plugged in there. It is so awesome to be a part of this house. All right, so raise your hands if you've heard me speak the last time that I was here. Cool. All right. If you have not, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, okay? I got the Britney Spears mic on tonight. It's really funny because most of you probably don't really get that reference. It's funnier because you don't. Um, but my hands are free tonight, so you might start thinking that I'm like Italian. I really like to talk with my hands, get a little bit excited. But I promise you I'm not Italian uh, at all. Like, I, I promise I'm not Italian. I would probably be the whitest Italian ever. Pastor John would probably be ashamed to call me an Italian. We'll just... Yeah, that's between you and me. But all right, like I said, hey, I got something on my heart to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start off in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And it says this. Hey, now, I'm going to ask you that you guys repeat something after me. So I hope that you guys are prepared, that you're ready, that you're going to participate with me. Are you guys ready? All right, chapter 14 says this. You are the light, say light, of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light, say light, a candle and put it under a basket, but on a candlestick. And it gives light, say light, light. to all who are in the house. Let your light, say light, light, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The title of my message today is the lighthouse, the lighthouse. Will you guys bow your heads and pray with me? Father, I thank you for the opportunity that it is to get to speak here before your students. Lord, we recognize that the students that are in this place tonight, that they are the leaders of this next generation. And Father, we do not take that lightly at all. Lord, we take this with such intentionality that these are special students that are sitting in these seats, that they have a plan and a purpose Lord, that you have created them for. So, Lord, I thank you right now for the opportunity that it is to get to speak, Father, on your behalf. Lord, let it be your words that come out of my mouth, Lord, and not my own. Lord, I thank you for every student's heart that's going to be changed in this place tonight. Lord, let these students, Father, have an impact, have, feel your impact here tonight. Let them have a moment with you, an encounter with you, with your love. Lord, I thank you so much for being able to be here tonight. We just say that in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on. Well, I got, so while I was growing up, uh, I'm still kind of working on that, by the way. Um, while I was growing up, my grandmother, she collected lighthouses, right? They covered the windowsill in the kitchen. She had pictures of them all over the place. She loved lighthouses. For some reason, they held a special significance to her. And I really still don't know why to this day, um, but she loved lighthouses. Now, my grandmother, she was a little, little lady. Like, I'm talking like she was four, six, like she was a little, 
little lady. Some of you middle schoolers are, might be a little bit taller than she was. Like, she was little. So it might be a little bit hard for you to really picture her with tattoos. I probably couldn't picture her with tattoos either. But I promise you, if she had a tattoo, it would probably be of a lighthouse because she loved lighthouses that much. Well, when, it, when she passed away about two years ago, um, each of the grandchildren got to pick one of the lighthouses that she had collected to keep as a, a keepsake. Well, this right here is the lighthouse that I chose. And it's special to me because it was special to her. So I've kept it, I've held on to it because it often reminds me of her. And as I was preparing for this message and I saw this lighthouse that now sits on our windowsill in our bedroom, and the question came to mind, what is a lighthouse? Like, what, what's the pur- like what purpose does it serve? And you're probably like, duh, Adam. It's a house that produces light, right? Like, duh. But, you know, I had to look up the definition because that's just, you know, what we do, right? You got to look up the definition of things. So the definition of a lighthouse is this. A lighthouse is a tower or other structure containing a beacon of light. Remember that, a beacon of light. To warn or guide ships at sea. A beacon of light. A beacon of light. Do you remember what Matthew 5, 16 said? Let your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus is talking to us here about being disciples, followers of Jesus. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to bring his light into the world. You see, when Jesus came into the earth, he himself was the light. He was the light of the world, bringing hope, peace, joy, love, all of those good things with him. When he died on the cross for my sins and your sins, He passed that torch onto us so that now we are the light of the world. We are called and created to bring hope, peace, joy, light to the world around us. Just as lighthouses shine its light to guide sailors to safety, as disciples we are called to shine our light into the world to bring people closer to Jesus. Being a disciple means following Jesus and imitating Jesus, his teachings, his actions, his character, and using the influence that he has given us. When people have an encounter with you, what will they experience? John 13, 35 says, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I remember one day I was driving home from Walmart, and I saw two homeless people that were sitting on the side of the street. They were asking for money. And I looked at them, and I looked away real quick, and I started driving. The whole way home, I felt so convicted. I felt convicted, and I started making up excuses in my mind, like, oh, God, God, I'm sorry. I know that's not your will. I know, like, that's not your character, and I promise next time I'll give them something. I'll do something, whatever I can. And I felt so heavy in my heart in that moment. God said to me, don't promise me a next time. Just do it now. How many of you know in that moment you're going to feel so convicted and you're going to turn the car around, right? Yeah, so I turned the car around. And meanwhile, I was about halfway home, by the way, right? So this wasn't like, this was like, ah, man, really? So I was about halfway home, and I started making my way back, and I just I started thinking, I was like, man, I don't got any cash. Like, I don't got anything to give them. Like, what am I going to do? But I remembered where they were, and they were right next to a McDonald's. So I went to the McDonald's uh, drive through line. I got them a couple sandwiches and a couple uh, things of fries. And I went back to them. I rolled down my window, and I said, God loves you. You are blessed. And I gave them the food. And that was it. It was that simple. It doesn't have to look like anything super complicated. It doesn't have to be really hard to do. It just took me being obedient in that moment. I showed them love by shining my light when I had the opportunity to. In a way that only I could really do in that moment. I didn't have any other thing to do. I just did what I could do. 
But being a light really isn't always that easy. Sometimes it's a little hard. Sometimes it really doesn't make sense to us. I remember having a conversation with my mother one time, and she was kind of struggling with, on why God had moved her to a new position at work. She's moved to a new department, but she really liked the department that she was already working in. She explained to me that the department she had been working in, there was a, a few fellow Christians there, right? Like she really liked the work environment. She enjoyed working with them. They were always positive. It created a fun work environment. And in her new department that she got moved to, there was not a single Christian in the whole department. The work environment was completely different. It was a lot of negative talk, a lot of unprofessionalism, and just wasn't the department that was not fun to work for. So she was questioning why God had moved her from the department that she loved and enjoyed so much and that she was comfortable in to move her to a department full of unbelievers that had nothing in common with her. The move didn't make her happy. She felt isolated. She was making more money, but it really didn't seem worth it. So as she was talking and telling me the story, I'm just kind of sitting back and I'm trying to, you know, formulate an answer in my mind. And, man, I just, to be honest, I, she just began to doubt whether God was making the right decision. She, she started feeling confused and having those doubts. And, but, honestly, she began to doubt whether God had made the, deci- the right decision for her or not. You know, it didn't really seem like in that moment he made the right decision for her. So she finished up telling me her story and explaining her situation. God just kind of put it on my heart. The scripture that I remembered is that God calls us to be salt and light to the earth. And I couldn't help but think of my mother's situation in that same light. My mother was working in a department that was full of other lights. My mother was working in a department that had other Christians there. But God saw another department that was dark and void of light. And in that darkness and in that emptiness, he saw his children that he died for on the cross. His children that had lost any influence of light in their life to bring hope, the hope of Jesus. And as he looked at my mother's department full of all those different lights, he saw my mother's light shining the brightest. And he said to himself, I need this light to go into the darkness to get that emptiness and to reach my children with the light that I have placed inside of her. So he picked up that light and he placed it inside the darkness. You see, light infiltrates the very means that darkness tries to use to break, to separate, and to remove people from the love of God. And as light, but a light brings them into that love that Jesus has for them. That love that Jesus had showed when he died on the cross for them. My mother's light shined brighter than any darkness. Because where there is light, there can be no darkness. Now that department would have a light in it. I'm here to tell you that sometimes God's going to take you out of a department. He's going to take you out of a situation that you feel comfortable. A place that you feel like you're meant to be. And he's going to call you to a place where your impact can be greater. It might not always feel warm and fuzzy. It might not always feel like the right move, but God is strategic in placing his light in the darkness that needs it the most. You know, it's kind of hard to be the light in a well-lit room. Like we have all the lights on right now, right? One flashlight's not going to make a huge difference in this room. But if we were to turn off all of these lights and it would be dark in here, one flashlight would make all the difference in the world. Your light, your influence in a lit room isn't as great as your influence in a dark room. Remember that. Without darkness or storms, there would be no need for a lighthouse. If sailors could see everything in front of them, what's the need for a lighthouse? You see, lighthouses were created to shine in the darkness. They were created for those moments that most people would try to avoid. You know, those rough waters, those heavy winds, the rain, the snow, the fog, the circumstances that everyone would try to avoid. The lighthouse's purpose lives in that very place. You see, it's got a purpose 
that is meant to bring comfort to those in the middle of a storm. And I'm here to tell you that tonight that your light, you are that light. You are that light that somebody needs. No matter where you go, your light is going to shine brighter than any darkness this world has. Brighter than anyone's depression, brighter than anyone's loneliness, anyone's anger, anyone's bad attitude in the grocery store checkout line. Your light has the potential to be brighter than the moon, the sun, and the stars combined. Do you believe that tonight? Do you know what's really cool about a lighthouse? Is their light shines 360 degrees. It's so bright that it can be seen in any direction. This is so important because in the middle of a storm, ships can often be thrown so far off course by huge waves or heavy winds, even to the opposite side of an island sometimes. But no matter what direction you're coming from, the light always shines bright amongst the storm. And the same is true for you or me. That no matter what kind of darkness or storm that you walk into, your light will always shine brighter. And you will be the beacon of hope to all of those around you. Being a light, it can be scary, a scary thing for some of us sometimes. You know, maybe you're really not outgoing. Maybe you're kind of shy. I'm kind of shy naturally. But you know, you're still called to be a light to the world. It's the first week of December, so you guys know what that means, right? Thanksgiving's over, boo, right? No, Christmas is coming, right? Like it's almost Christmas time. Are you guys excited for Christmas? Yeah. Guys, Christmas is the perfect time to spread joy, love, your light with people around you. There's some really simple ways that we can do this. Maybe it's baking cookies with your mom and handing them out to your neighbors or the fire department or the police station, whatever that looks like. Or maybe you want to participate in a toy drive and you want to provide toys for those students that are in need this holiday season. You guys can ask your parents to help you be a part of that. Those are two simple ways that you can make an impact with your life this holiday season. And there's so many different ways that you can do it. So I want you to ask yourself, what is it that I do in my everyday life that I can make my light shine with? What is it in my everyday life that I already do that can make my light happy for somebody else? That I can make the life of somebody else feel joy and the hope and the love of Jesus? So I want to wrap up today by just giving you a few final thoughts. Or calls to action, if you will. Remember, you should be a beacon of light, hope, and joy to everyone around you. Even when it's not easy. I want you to ask yourself, when people have an encounter with you, what will they experience? Will they experience a lighthouse, bringing people hope, bringing people into safety so that they can experience God's love for them? Or are they going to experience someone that's living outside of the light that God has given you? We talked earlier about being disciples of Jesus, which are followers who imitate his character. But we really can't follow Jesus without first accepting him and what he has done for us. So if you're here and you haven't committed your life to Christ, and you haven't asked him to be a part of your life yet, I want to give you that opportunity tonight. Now remember, hey, if you have made that decision before, and you've already asked Jesus into your life, you don't have to do it again. You can be comforted knowing that your salvation has already been accepted. You don't have to ask again. Jesus answers you the first time. You can never lose it. But I want to invite those that haven't made that choice before, the opportunity to accept Jesus into their life tonight. The Bible gives us some simple instructions. All we have to do is confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. 
So if that's you and you want to pray that prayer for the first time, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hands. Everyone here and everybody in Newcastle, they're going to say this prayer out loud with you. So would you guys just bow your heads with me? I want to give you that opportunity tonight to receive Jesus, to make that decision for yourself. It's a decision that you're never going to regret. It's going to be the best decision of your life. Newcastle, this is for you as well. If you want to receive Jesus, you can do it tonight, today. I want, to, I want you just guys to raise your hands on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. One more opportunity. If you want to receive the best gift that you could ever receive, I want you to raise your hand right now. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, everybody, repeat after me when you hear it. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of your Son, Jesus, and I declare him Lord of my life. I believe that he died on the cross, that he was buried, and that you raised him to life again. And I declare from this day forward that my life will never be the same. My sins are now forgiven. My eternity is now in heaven. And I declare this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, can we celebrate all of those people that just made that decision? Thank you, guys.